Dr. Drew joins us right now. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm great. Uh, thanks for being with us. And uh, is Hillary okay? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about this because there's been a whole bunch of stories. Of course, we know Mrs. Clinton had a uh, some kind of a health issue a, a year or so back, a couple years ago, when she had a fall and she is rumored to have these balance issues, and this photograph showed up of her being helped up the steps after slipping on a stair. Now it turns out that picture actually is from February. Uh, and, uh, you know, Hannity inexplicably spent an entire week, you know, trying to analyze her health from still photos. And, Hannity? <laughs> yeah, an innuendo. Uh, but I wanted to get your take on this because, you know, is it first of all? Is it fair for us to be making health evaluations based on images that we see in the media? Because you know, if a camera was on me, I trip and stumble all the me time. Me too. Yeah, I, I'm very concerned about people, journalists, and people with no medical training making even discussing this issue. They need to bring physicians in, and there's not a lot we can tell from visual images. I mean, unless we see you know major neurological changes or a rash or something. But the fact is, she released her medical records some time ago. And if you listen to my show last week, I just, I just called a friend of mine, Dr. Robert Heisinger, who's an excellent internist pulmonologist, and we just dispassionately sat and evaluated the medical record that she had released. And based on the information that she has provided and her doctors have provided, we were gravely concerned, not just about her health care, not about her health, but her health care. Why? Well, it's, it's hard for people to understand. Both of us concluded that if we were providing the care that she was receiving, We'd be ashamed to show up in the doctor's lounge. We'd be laughed out. It's, it's, she's receiving sort of 1950-level sort of care by our evaluation. So here's the basic facts. And by the way, before I launch into it, I don't know if you saw the New York Times this morning, but the science section has a front-page article about the so-called Goldwater Rule, where psychiatrists are being urged from an ethical perspective not to, quote, psychoanalyze political figures or people that they don't have a chance to evaluate. Hmm. I would, for in that, they're saying that this thing needs to change. It's, it's, it may be even our ethical obligation to evaluate leaders. And there's a giant difference between, quote, psychoanalyzing somebody and looking at medical symptoms that are apparent as a result of people's behavior. That's very different than saying deep, you know, trying to derive deep, deep notions about their psychological uh, sort of constructs as opposed to, hey, that person looks depressed or that person looks manic. Well, there are people calling for, the, the, saying that, that uh, T- Trump needs a mental exam. Yeah, Karen well, Bass, the yeah, former state assembly well, speaker, wants, what, a, wants a legislation well, look, passed. You can't, you, can't, you, you, you can't say he's a malignant narcissist because he maintains relationships. That's the only thing we can say at a distance. People flee malignant narcissists. They don't want to be around <laughs> well, them. Well, they, they do unless they have a billion dollars. Because no, no, they, will please, stay tethered, me, they will stay tethered to people <laughs> who are paying the children them. children of malignant narcissists are aren't well put together and aren't inclined to be around their fathers, believe me. But, but he does have pressured speech, and he has trouble editing his speech, and he seems to have boundless energy, and he says he only sleeps four hours a night. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, Mr. Trump, but if I were adding that score up, I'd say, hmm, that's hypomania. <laughs> Maybe he's got a little hypomanic stuff going on. And by the way, th- this article in the New York Times points this out, too. All these things we say are not pure pejoratives. If I, somebody were the president, I kind of want them to be hypomanic because, you know, yeah. they, they, the problem is the risk is they could flip into mania or say things they shouldn't say, as we're, as we're sort of seeing here. But let's go back to Hillary. So we, we took a look at her record, and here are the basic facts. She had two episodes of what's called deep venous thrombosis. Common problem, blood clots in the leg. She also has hypothyroidism. And she's been treated for hypothyroidism with something called armor thyroid which is very unconventional and something that we used to use back in the 60s. And both he and I went, hmm, that's weird. And by the way, wow, uh, armor thyroid sometimes has some weird side effects. Oh, well, okay. So she goes on Coumadin. That's weird uh, because Coumadin really isn't even used anymore. Now we use Eliquis or Xarelto, things like this. Certainly somebody, the presidential candidate, would get one of the newer anticoagulants. Then she Hmm. falls, hits her head. And as a complication of that has something called a transverse sinus thrombosis. This is an exceedingly rare clot. I've only seen one of these in my career, which is a clot in the collecting system for the cerebral spinal fluid. And it essentially guarantees that somebody has something wrong with their coagulation system. Well, she's had two clots, a transverse sinus thrombosis. What's wrong with her coagulation system? Has that been evaluated? And oh, by the way, armor thyroid, 
associated rarely with hypercoagulability. So the very medicine the doctors are using may be causing this problem, and they're using an old-fashioned medicine to treat it. What is going on with her health care? It's bizarre. i got to tell you, look, maybe they have reasons, but at a distance, it looks bizarre. Hmm. Uh, we're talking with, of course, uh, Dr. Drew, who is heard every day on this very radio station and on HLN, on your TVs, and you can follow him on Twitter, at Dr. Drew. Uh, you know, the medical history of presidents is something that we only have recently started to get into. Uh, the, the reality is, is that most uh, presidential health crises were hidden from the public. I mean, oh, yeah. famously, Grover Cleveland had cancer surgery on his jaw on a boat in New York Harbor. Uh, How about Wilson? <laughs> with a had a stroke, right? And they basically just kept him in the White House and his wife ran the country yeah, for two years. that's right. So, so, you know, this is a new, for, for that matter, FDR, most Americans didn't realize FDR suffered from polio. Well, and once they're president, there seems to be a, a generally at least a standard of care that it's maintained. But for our senators and the congressmen and judges and political candidates, there's no objective standard. We, we have no reassurances of them getting even moderate care. <laughs> they, get, they get what they get, and it, it, it just seems to, it seems to he and I, that there ought to be some sort of standard for people that are going to lead the country or are going to be making these important decisions. This Again, Hillary may be fine with all of this. I mean, it's, it's dangerous and it's concerning, but you can see. And by the way, when she, there are two other things that gravely concerned us. When she hit her head, she had to wear these prism glasses right. when she came out. Right. That is brain damage, and so that and it's affecting her balance. Now, clearly it hasn't affected her cognition, but tell us a little more about that. That's profound. And then number two, when they screen her for heart disease, again, they did an old-fashioned screen. It just seems like she's getting care from somebody that she met in Arkansas when she was a kid. And uh, I just, you've got to wonder. You've got to wonder. It's, it's no, not so much that her health is a, is a grave concern. It's that the care she's getting could make it a concern. Well, it's fascinating, and I know that you know there's a whole industry that has uh, arisen out of uh, analysis of uh, of people that you know by proxy, if you will, or it's medical analysis and even psychological analysis. Well, and, and from my perspective, you know, I I definitely uh, agree that we shouldn't be doing deep analytical, you know, concluding anything except sort of saying in cases like this, and here's how we'd evaluate it, and here's our concerns. We can't, it's hard to conclude anything. It's, by the way, even harder to say that that's a liability as opposed to an asset, whatever particular condition we're looking at. But I think that clinicians have an obligation to help people hmm. interpret what's going on in the press because there's so much nonsense out there. All right. Hey, Dr. Drew, as always, we appreciate it. Follow Dr. Drew on Twitter at Dr. Drew. Listen to him every day from noon to three with Mike Catherwood. And see him on your TVs on HLN. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.